Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Youth Matters, a show looking at local, national and global issues affecting the youth of today. Now on today's show we are discussing life after university. According to figures published by the DfE, in 2016, 87% of graduates went on to uh, employment. Compare that uh, in contrast to those who are undergraduates uh, who are in employment, which uh, summed up to 70%. So that's a significant difference between those who are employed and are graduates and those who are employed and are undergraduates. On top of that, uh, in 2016, statistics also shows that someone who is a graduate earns £9,500 more than someone who is an undergraduate. Now with statistics strongly favouring people to go to university, okay, the challenge that's uh, presented is with all the benefits, what do you do when you've got a hefty student loan to pay at the end of the course? Does that justify the investment in going to university? That's what we are discussing today with our panel. We would love for you to get involved with the discussion. Assalamu alaikum. Asko amra show, amra baibu na intulge mati mo. University bade kita khora zayat. Me university bade khoto manoshon khamo zayin, khoto manche gyaro fora leha khoroin. Amra baibu na intulge mati mo. Tan tan experience ke lasi. University et mani bala laksil ni zela zetarda guest like toise ni kita khosto lakse. Otalaya matko ta khor mo. Afna ra zudin na university gesto in na sinta khor afna ra khor ta intulge university data. The afna ra shori koi basho log er number as screeno. To introduce my guests, we have three different perspectives on this particular issue. We have Masuma Sami. Uh, joining us, who is a fresh university graduate um, who is studying geography and is now looking to move on to studying uh, medicine. So we look forward to listening to your views. We also have Adil Anwar, who's a MA postgraduate and who's working as well. So we'll get a very interesting perspective on how life is uh, for a postgraduate and some of the challenges that that presents. And finally, we have Mahfouz Tuhin Ahmed, who's a university graduate uh, this current academic year who was studying medicine and we look forward to learning about his journey through school college and now university so thank you for coming on the show okay um, as always we would love to hear from you okay about your views so please you've got the uh, number on the screen and you've got the email address as well please get in touch the question we're asking our audience today is okay what was your best memory of university People always speak about their experiences from university, but what was your one memory, okay, that you absolutely uh, cherish? If you would like to share that with us, please phone in or uh, send us an email and we will share that with everyone uh, on the show today. We'll start today, uh, I'm going to start off by doing a little quiz, Masoom and Mahfouz, you guys aren't aware of this. Okay, uh, Adil, I'm going to get you to judge this, okay? Right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick fire quiz and all I want is a yes and a no when I ask you the question. This is like a litmus test. To find out, basically, I was doing some research, depending on your answers, whether you will survive, okay, post-university. So do you have the skills and the qualities and is your situation in such a, you know, manner that you are able to survive? So I'll start off with you, Mr. Yuma, just a yes or a no, okay? And the same question to Mahfoud after. Okay, do you still use your student ID card to get discount at shops? Yes. Yes? Mahfouz? Yes. Yeah? Even though you guys are no longer students? No, sorry. No, no. okay. So, Mahfouz, so there's no moral m guilt, Masuma, from you? No, because I'm still a student technically, because I'll be studying medicine in okay. September. So, you're okay. Mahfouz? I use NHS discount now. <laughs> okay, so you don't have to, yeah? Okay, brilliant. Um, second question, quick uh, fire. Do you have a graduate bank account or is it a normal bank account? Normal. Normal bank account. Okay, Mahfouz, what about yourself? It's going to switch over to a graduate account. It's going to switch over to a graduate account. Okay, so I think uh, once again, obviously, there are more benefits for people who are graduates, and uh, that's one of the benefits. Hmm. Okay, third one. Have you secured? You've said obviously you're moving on to another degree, so you haven't secured a job. Mafuz, have you secured a yeah. job? Excellent. Um, Masuma, do you have savings? You don't have to reveal the millions that you have in your bank account, um, but do I you have savings? Yeah, but ha I've had to save up for medicine. Okay, excellent. Uh, Mahfouz? Yes. Yeah? Even on doctor's salary? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> um, next question, Masuma. And once again, we're trying to figure out whether you will survive post-university. Are you living with your parents? Yes. Okay, so obviously, costs are low. Mahfouz, are you living with your parents? Yes. Yeah? You don't have a choice in that, but okay. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, Masuma, next question. Uh, are you stressed or do you kind of... Uh, do you, do you have kind of uh, reservations? Do you have any kind of stress? Do you wake up halfway through the night where you're stressed about paying back the student loan? 
No, because I haven't seen the money. Okay. If that makes sense. So I just That's fine. don't think it exists. You're not losing any sleep? No. Okay, what about you, Mahfuz? No. No? Not at all. I don't even think about it, to be honest. Okay, that's brilliant. That's really good. So you guys look as though you're strong mentally. Okay, uh, are you looking to get married anytime soon, Masuma? My mum's going to kill me. No. Okay. No? Okay, that's fine. And Mahfuz, what about yourself? No. Okay, so, all right. And the last question, uh, you don't have to once again reveal anything. Are you currently in debt? Other than student loan, let's put that no. to one side. And Mafu as well by yourself. So great. So Adil, do you think someone who's a mature student, do you think these guys have answered correctly enough? And we've got so. enough to uh, ascertain that yes, they will you survive. survive. Yeah. Survive. So you've heard it first on Youth Matters. Okay. <laughs> all right. So now let's go into the kind of formal questions. And I think today's show is all about trying to, you know, our audience watching at home, our young people who are possibly thinking about university, our parents who are also thinking about sending their children to university. You know, what life was like for you so Masima the first question for you is you know what did you study at university and why so I studied geography at university it was physical geography so it was looking at geomorphology climate change why I studied this subject is because it's all about contemporary global issues it's all about things going on around the world like climate change and such so is such an imminent issue as well as you know looking at natural hazards um, these these are real things which will affect people's lives, even if it's not in the short term. But it's going to happen soon. Okay, and um, and sorry, but I know you've decided now you're going to study medicine. So how 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 did that come about? Um, long story short, um, I had an offer to do medicine during my A levels at St George's, and I got a B in chemistry, and my insurance was geography at King's. Okay. Yeah. All right, so great. Um, and Mafuz, you know, Masuma shared her reasons, okay. Uh, what was your reason for studying uh, the course that you did at university? Um, um, as with most um, Asian people who go into medicine, it's usually not your choice. Um, so <laughs> for me, my, the choice was made when I was in year two, probably, yeah, two, from okay. my dad and mum. And um, alhamdulillah, initially I didn't really, wasn't that eager in doing it. And it's only in like my fourth year of medicine when you finally hit me that, wow, I'm doing a solid degree, which mm. gives me the skill set to do so much more. Mm. But was, it, was, it, was medicine what you wanted to do, Mahfuz, or do you feel as though you were forced into it by your parents? Because you're right, there are many parents out there who, you know, Asian parents who want their children to become doctors. Mm. Okay, so did you, was it something, you know, looking back now, is it something that you wanted to do? Was it forced upon you? Or was, it, was there a stage where you decided actually that this is what I want to do? I don't think, it, I mean, using, I don't think we should use the word forced as such. It's more so... Um, uh, Emotional blackmail. <laughs> brainwashed. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, basically, just, just your upbringing and the way you, the, our parents go about doing certain things. And it's just the little things that build up and you realise you've got no choice. And for me, it, was, it wasn't forced. It wasn't something that I had to do or... I'll be kicked out of the house or anything like that. Are your parents watching this? No. Just so, just, just, okay, so <laughs> Thankfully, they're not watching yeah? it. So um, it wasn't something that was forced, but more so the idea was it built in and okay. taught. And um, eventually you just realised that you can do it, so do it. So the idea was planted at an yeah. early stage. And, the, and, and I guess as time went on, your parents kind of tried to emphasise the importance of and the, you know, and the difference you could make if you exactly, pursued that exactly, yeah. pathway. Yeah? OK, so that's really uh, uh, that's good to know. Um, Adil, uh, we haven't forgotten about you. Um, in terms of, you know, you, you, you're in a very interesting position because you studied, your first degree was in Scotland. Mm -hmm. Okay, and yeah. then you've done a postgraduate degree. Um, yeah. Tell us, tell us, you know, was it the same subject? What was the difference? No, no. Um, I, I did my initial degree at Edinburgh University. I was born and raised there. So it was just a natural thing to do after, you know, after high school. Mm. Go and go to uni and get a degree. And the subject um, that you studied at university, what did you study? I did law. Law, okay. Yeah. Um, and then afterwards, I moved to England. I got a job in London, a yeah. graduate level job. Moved down, worked for... Um, I think I worked for about six or seven months. Okay. I loved the place I worked at. Um, I got a bit bored, fought, spoke to my dad quite regularly. And he's like, listen, if you're getting bored, and, and I was missing university, mm. I was missing studying, mm. just missed the whole atmosphere. Um, I had a little chat with my manager. I got on with him quite well. And he said, listen, if you want to do a master's, we will support you. Um, and there's you know, very good universities in London sure. that allow you to work and study at the same time. And did you do it on, 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 on your same field? No, no, I changed. Um, at the time, this was just before Brexit. Uh, so the relevant thing then was, you know, 
uh, professional migration. Okay. You know, medical professionals moving around the European Union. And stuff sure. Like that. Sure. So okay. I, I, yeah, I did it in a different field. Okay. Thank you. Uh, as always, you know, we'd love to hear your views. You know, the question that we're uh, posing to the audience today is, you know, what is your best memory from university? What is your standout memory from university? Please, you know, email us or call us in. Uh, call into the studio and talk to us and tell us about your great memories from university. As come as again, I'm Ral. After that, the Khray Show. After that, then we return to the university. Now, after that, we return to the university. University. Kunjinish money, sop the balalax in university. Sop the best memory kunjinish. So, Okta Luyana, Ambassador of Nara Gureta, Gure Amraloge, Shekhorta. Masuma, was university what you expected it to be? Because you know, sometimes, you know, when you're going through school, college, and people talk about university, you know, was it what you expected? Um, I would say a hundred, yeah, I would say a hundred percent. Or did it exceed expectations? I think it exceeded expectations because I didn't even want to go to King's in the first place. Mm. Um, but um, after like being there for a year and realizing like there's so much to get involved in, and I fully immersed myself in yeah. second year. So I was like, I did. I was in a society. Um, I was like a student rep, a student ambassador, and then I was in the student union as well. And when I did all of that, I realized you can get a lot more out of university. Sure. Mahfouz, you know, just following on from what Masimo was saying, I think there are many people who would say, w w would you say you were the same way? You didn't expect some of the opportunities that are there at university until you go yeah, there? Like, to be honest, I went to university with no expectations at all. I just wanted to go in and get out. Hmm, I because your parents I obviously <laughs> no, I uh, like, had your leash. It was like the like five years or six years at university is just quite a daunting thing. But as an 18 year old, once mm. you go in and it's like, I just want to get to the end of it. But um, as Masuma said, at university, the amount of opportunities you have is immense. As in, I was part of societies like varying from cultural societies mm. to medical societies to even business societies. I was mm. doing what, everything that came my way, really. Sure. And um, the opportunities you do get within when you're in university, they actually, I think those are more important than the degree itself because it gives you a more um, gives you more skills and more um, experiences that you can take mm. afterwards. For instance, sure. like if you're part of a society and you're, say, a president for a society, that managerial experience, you're not going to get anywhere else mm. because university doesn't teach you to be a manager. Sure. Mahfuz, you know, w I'm interested in finding out, you know, at what age did you realise that, you know what, it's no longer my parents who want me to do a medical degree, it's actually something that I want to pursue now? What age? Because, you know, I'm um, sure there are people out there who are probably in a I'll similar be honest situation. With you. I'll be honest with you. Um, Initially, it was all um, cause like throughout my academia. Yeah. I've never had to struggle with getting results and everything. Mm, I mean, sure. A level, and it was during AS really that when I realized my grades weren't that great, sure. and um, the fact that the realization that I may not get into medicine, that's when it hit me that how much I actually wanted it. Okay. And that's when I thought, okay, so I actually do want it, and that's when things just changed for me, and sure. I just changed my mindset, and I started to almost um, open my arms towards loving medicine mm. and that's when it And how did you kind of mentally prepare yourself because you know for most degrees it's three years okay but a five-year degree how did you kind of mentally prepare yourself for that? So for me um, I didn't want to make my degree my life so going to university was just a small part another part of me so why I want to, mentally I just thought okay I'm gonna go I'm gonna study but at the same time, I'm going to do everything else. So that's when I joined like a charity mm. and I got involved with that. So I almost was living two lives, one in the university and one mm. outside of it. Okay, so that's, that's a I really interesting way of uh, saying that. Um, Masuma, coming back to you, um, how important do you think it's, you know, having graduated now, how important is it to have a real passion for what you study? I think I realised in third year, whilst doing my dissertation and coming up with a topic, you need to be passionate. You can't write 10,000 words about something that you're not passionate about. So um, I would say in third year, first year and second year just goes by choosing modules. But once you have to sit down, come up with an idea and have no guidance, like little guidance from your professors and lecturers, then, yeah. Sure. And Adil, you know, University, some people obviously, they, they go because they want to develop themselves further, they see it as a, as a means to an end in terms of career. In terms of, for yourself, 
Was this something that you did independently, this choice to go to university, or was this uh, something that, once again, a bit like Mathwood, where there was an expectation from the family that you should be going to university? Shout out to my dad if you're watching. <laughs> uh, I don't know if he is. But um, uh, no, it was my family. Um, my dad has a master's, whatever, um, although not from this country. So there was always that expectation. He set the bar quite high, and he's That's like, good. right, my kids are going to go. And they're gonna they're gonna get achievements as well and degrees and whatnot. So right. it was just it was put into us. Um, sure. And a lot of people dropped out when they were sixteen at school, but uh, we stayed on okay. so that we could get into university and stuff. Sure, I'll come back to you on that. Um, we've got a caller on the line. Assalamu alaikum caller. Assalamu alaikum caller. Assalamu alaikum. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Hello. Thank Hello. you for calling in. Can you tell us about your best experience from university, please, brother? Brother, if you could lower the volume at home uh, on your TV and tell us about the best experience you've had, you know, while you were at uni. Okay, I think uh, we've lost the caller. Caller will probably call back. But please, can you make sure that your sound volume on your TV is low when you call in and so we can have that conversation? So, Adil, uh, it was very much, I guess, you know, the high expectations set by yeah. your parents and, you know, that... that they wanted obviously their children to also follow suit yeah but to be honest my masters was it was different um, okay i did that because i wanted to so it was for the, was it would you say and you know was it for the love of learning or was it because you saw benefit for your career pathway uh but a bit of both to be honest um you know academic theoretical studies are completely different from practical work mm. um you probably know that uh, reading a book isn't the same as actually going out and doing it in the real life so there was, a, there was that uh, so i wanted to go back and learn a few more things um, but also, um, yeah, it was the right thing to do at that time, okay. especially because my, my organisation was saying, look, we will actually fund some of it as well, mm. and the dissertation and stuff. Um, and they allowed me to take time off, oh, that's paid and really un unpaid as well. That's really so good to know. Yeah. Okay, um, Masoud, my same question to you. Um, we've heard, obviously, from both Mahfuz and Adil. Um, did, you f did you feel that kind of uh, pressure or expectation from your family that we want you to go to university? Or how was it, how was it for you? Um, I don't think my parents necessarily put that pressure on me but I know my mum ever since I was little would always encourage me to do my best and um, like I don't have typical Asian parents my mum wanted me to do art and history okay. and English literature so when she found out like that I'd applied for medicine she was just like what are you doing why are you going to waste your life are you sure it wasn't reverse psychology for me <laughs> yeah and I think that's maybe the way forward <laughs> Okay. Um, no, 100% it wasn't. My mum was just like, you know, you only live once, YOLO. But um, okay. it's like you should have um, like a good work-life balance. Think about, you know, everything outside of just your career. Yeah. Um, same, like she did the same to my brother as well. She's always just like, don't do too much. Don't overwork yourself, but wow, well, that um, sounds really refreshing to what we're doing. <laughs> but that's that's really good. Uh, I think it'd be nice to hear your mum maybe come on the show and uh, give us a few tips on how you know parenting should be. Um, but what about you know, uh, Math is coming to you now. Um, should in this day and age, and you know, um, should parents put pressure on children to go to university? What's your view on that? I think uh, in this day and age, um, parents shouldn't put pressure on children to go to university but should be on top of their education. So I say that because um, in this day and age it's so easy with social media, for access to the internet, the phone, just to get distracted all the time. So if uh, as parents, if you're not on top of your mm. children's academia, they sure. could just sway away. Sure, I guess what, you know, what I'm uh, trying to allude to is that you know, at that age, when someone's left school or they've left college, you know, they don't know what's in their best interest. And like you say, with all mm. those distractions, you know, sometimes you know, there are people that I know um, who if their parents and their family didn't put pressure on them, mm. you know, at that age they didn't want to go to university, yeah. they wanted to work. But looking back now, mm. it was the best thing that could have happened, but they couldn't make that decision. So I'm, I guess I'm coming back to that. So yeah, what I mean, would you say about I would say that? that, yeah, in that case, then I think it's important to actually, after college or if during the second year of college, to sit down with um, your son or daughter and just ask, what do you want to do in life? As in, what's your plans? And just have an open dialogue as opposed to just forcing someone to do something for the sake of it. Because most of the time you find that students are going into university not knowing what they're going to do with their lives, mm -hmm. but doing a degree because their parents said you need a degree or sure. problems. Okay. No, no, thank you for that. Um, Masuma, before we go to break, a quick question on 
you know, nowadays it's really, uh, we've got more and more girls going to university, more females going to university. How do you respond to concerns that parents might have that, you know, the worry that by girls going to university, they're becoming more independent and their mindset is almost changing to maybe, uh, you know, the traditional mindset or how they want their, you know, girls to be. How do you, how do you respond to that concern from parents? Like my personal experience? Uh, you can talk about it personally or just generally? I, um, so I'm quite lucky that I have like technically liberal parents, they're not traditional, but I think honestly live in this day and age, if you've come to live in London, fair enough, keep your traditions, your values, but you still need to integrate and like girls are equal to guys and it really frustrates me when I see some like aunties encouraging their sons but leaving their daughters in the background and it like alhamdulillah I don't have parents like that I've been allowed to do much more than my older brother is allowed to do it, it yeah it genuinely frustrates me I don't think parents should have this mindset where you know, get a degree for the sake of it and then it will help you get better rishtas, like, for instance, like, if I'm being honest. Mm. Um, okay. And, yeah. I think, what, you know, why do parents have that concern when it comes to girls in particular? Because one could argue that even for boys, they might go to university, they might develop that independence, that change of mindset. Why is it more kind of threatening when it's a girl? Um, I really don't know the answer to that. I think um, it would probably depend on the parents. Um, like like you just said before, um, I think it really depends on whether the mother, you know, who the daughter might look up to, if she's if she's got higher education, then that might inspire the daughter. Whereas I think traditionally, from from the countries that we come from, um, I think women are were sort of discouraged or whatever from education, so that might have sort of sure. carried over into the UK. But no, I think it's wrong. I think look. Sure. We live in the 21st century, it's not, um, mm. you know, we Maf should be encouraged. Sure. Mafas, do you feel that, you know, some parents might be worried that, you know, they're, you know, it's that, it's that challenge of the cultural upbringing, the religious upbringing, and maybe going to a, going to an institution, a place mm. where those values, those norms, okay, cultural, uh, religious norms, might get challenged, and mm. then the consequences of that. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I can understand where their concern is coming from, and it goes back to, uh, to our parents' upbringing. Yeah. So most of our parents, um, they were brought up in, say, Bangladesh or another country, where again education for women wasn't really encouraged. Mm -hmm. So um, th th they've kind of brought that back here, and then send their daughters to schools, college, and expect them to get good grades in those years. But when it comes to university, they're a bit like. Okay, let's think about it. But what I would say is just be confident of, on your upbringing. So if you're teaching your children the cultural upbringing, or the re religious values, the cultural values, then you shouldn't really be worried about sending your daughters to um, school. I mean, you have to, at university, you also have to understand, like, if you give your daughter an education, then that daughter will um, be able to stand on their own two feet. They're independent. You want them to be able to live a life in the UK where our women are being attacked, our women are being threatened in many ways. You want them to be able to stand up on their feet and tackle these issues. So if you don't give them the education, then what you'll find is our daughters and sisters and mothers, they're going to be shy away from all of this. And ultimately, they're going to be in a more vulnerable position. So I say education is the best way for us, sisters. OK, thank you for that. Um, as always, you know, we're going to take a short break now. But uh, once again, we want to hear from you. You know, whatever your experiences was of university, what was the one standout kind of memory that you have of university? OK, and you can be anonymous if it was something a bit crazy or wild. OK, but do share that with us, you know, just to give an insight to people who are watching this at home. Um, so inshallah see you after the break.